Hi guys, I am hmm, super excited to do another haul with you guys today. And I think I'm gonna have some extra special friends. This is Gordon's tail. He's very happy to be here. Um, let me see, I'm gonna try and pull up my little video guy, cause you know how I like to zoo. All right, there it is. That's Elvis making noise. I promise it'll actually be about like thrifting stuff in a second. All right, there we go. That's all set. So I want to start off by saying that anyone who knows me a little bit knows that I am a 44-year-old woman, and yet somehow I've never learned how to clean my room. So the disaster you see behind me is just, it is what it is. Come here, rabbit. I'm hoping all this joins me. He's my favorite. Come on. And for some reason, he's always like dead asleep when I do these things. Here he is. I don't know if you guys will be able to see him, but that's okay. He'll be chilling on my lap with his claws, apparently. So, uh, messy room, Elvis on my lap. Maybe some fight. We don't know. You guys are used to this shit by now. Um, so, Hazel Hearts Vintage is hosting a scavenger hunt on Instagram and so she has a list of like 20 different things that we're supposed to go and find and so um, of course while I'm at the thrift store finding weird things for Kayla scavenger hunt I'm finding weird things that I feel the need to purchase as well so I got some stuff today that I of course am excited about whoops man down okay so it's very cool stuff um, some of this stuff I'm going to admit that I found because I was looking for things for the scavenger hunt. Now there's a similar game that we play in our, um, Facebook group that I'm part of. Uh, we play a weekly bingo game. I suck at playing the bingo game and I'm going to tell you why I suck at it. We have nine things that we're supposed to find and actually list for sale. And I suck at it because a lot of the time I will find things that I have sitting around the house already um, and be able to post those. Like one of the things last week was like crazy, uh, like retro flower prints, you know, and there's so many sheets and whatever that have that kind of stuff. So that type of stuff um, I could just find from the stuff I have sitting at home. And then, but you know, I just don't do it. Like I, I get focused on like, let me list these things over here in this corner and I don't really go sort of source my own hoard. Part two is when I do go to a thrift store and I am looking for the things in bingo, I don't find them until the week after bingo. So if there's like Snoopy as part of bingo, I will find 700 Snoopy things next week, but I will not find any this week. And then the third thing is that sometimes, um, there have been times when there's like something in there that I'm just not gonna get, like like kids toys or whatever. Um, it's all stuff that sells, but I'm just not gonna pick it up because I don't care about it. Um, I have so much inventory first of all i don't need to shop at all you guys all know this so much inventory already um but also i i definitely do learn about new streams of inventory but there are some things that i do not give a shit about and i know i'm not going to want to sell it i'm not going to be motivated to sell it i won't enjoy it it just isn't going to happen and i'm okay with that there's so many things that i love to do um and even like I've started doing, looking for athletic wear and some streetwear stuff. I have no idea why. I do not really, I don't wear any of that stuff. I don't really necessarily like it, but for some reason I've been trying to find some of it. So there's always going to be new stuff. I don't, when people talk about like, oh, don't leave money on the table. First of all, I hate that phrase, don't leave money on the table. Okay. Um, no one is going to be an expert in everything. It's not going to happen. You do not find, doctors all have specialties, right? So, and there's, they all have specialties for a reason. So I don't think that you need to run out and learn everything you can about everything. I do think it's important to be diverse about what you're doing. Um, I love vintage clothes, but I also enjoy doing some modern clothes. I do vintage housewares and stuff. The housewares, I don't really like shipping because it's expensive to ship. Um, it's a pain in the ass to package. And, a, and the shipping is prohibitive for a lot of people to purchase. So. I still love picking some stuff up, as you will see today. But, um, you know, so, so I do think it's important to be diverse 
because you do have to be prepared. If the market changes, you have to be able to roll with that. But I don't think that you have to know everything about everything. I don't like doing CDs. I don't like doing kids' clothes or kids' toys. Um, I don't like sports equipment. Like, there's some stuff I just don't like. So, and that's okay. So, also, that thing about me being 44 years old and like making poor decisions because it's eight o'clock at night, I'm drinking coffee because it's delicious and it seems like a thing to do. But in about three hours, I'm going to try and go to bed and that's not going to work at all because I'm drinking coffee. I remember when I was in my 20s and I could drink coffee and still go to sleep and it didn't matter, but that's not true anymore. Okay, let's do fun stuff now. This is something, I don't remember why I was looking in this section. This is in like some weird sewing parts section that I never look at. I want to say that, you know, uh, Crazy Cat Lady Gifts is one of Kayla's categories, but I already fulfilled that category probably 150 times over. Um, but weird craft kits, especially that are like unopened and stuff, seem to sell sell well. They sell reliably. So somewhere between 15 and 25 bucks I should be able to get this sold for because it's unopened. I paid $2.50 for it. There were no specials today. It was just a Saturday. I went to Unique Thrift. Nothing special going on. So, um, But it's kind of cute in a hideous way. Um, for a latch hook kit, right? I mean, it's cute. Somebody's going to buy this. I don't know why, but they will. And they'll do it probably more. They'll store it in their basement and somebody will sell it in a state sale in five years. I don't care. Whatever. Gotta go. Um, so that was one of the first things I found. Not the most exciting. So, but we'll get to the most exciting. What is this? Oh, this is nothing that I'm going to sell. This is a wrist brace because I'm 44. And now apparently this hand, this is my right hand that I hold my phone with. And it hurts now sometimes, like when I do this, right? That hurts. Or if I'm like sitting like this typing, it hurts. So I'm gonna start wearing this once in a while, if it fits, because it's a medium. I don't actually know if it's gonna fit. This was also $250. Um, there was another one, but it looked less cute than this one does, because it's important if you're gonna have a wrist brace, that it looks cute. I don't even know if this fits the right hand. You know, oh, look at that, it does. And then it velcros, I guess like, oh! like a corset for your wrist this is amazing I think it's probably a little too big I don't know what these yeah hmm, that's sad okay so let's see how annoying this is gonna be all right I'll show you this this is pretty cool I don't know how much it's gonna sell for and if Kayla ends up watching this maybe she can give me a hint but she's a very busy woman I don't think she'll watch it but I'm gonna Instagram about it probably this is Lisa Frank kitties again we could do crazy cat lady gifts but we're not um this was also i think 250 lisa frank as you children of the 90s may remember i don't remember i was in college by the 90s but um she was really popular and there is a resurgence of Lisa Frank, and you'll find a lot of her stuff at like Dollar General and crap like that. But the Lisa Frank that's got the um, uppercase L and F is the older stuff. Her newer stuff, it's all lowercase letters. So sometimes some of this stuff sells for crazy amounts of money. This is just a cardboard box. Um, there are some like tins that we're selling online, but the inside, I have to hold it so I don't drop everything everywhere, is this little bead kit. So there's a whole bunch of beads and stuff. And you can make, I guess, jewelry or necklaces or something. Um, it, when I purchased it, all of this had fallen everywhere and was all over the place. Inside the box, it was a mess. And I sorted it back out again. I have no idea if all the parts are there. It has instructions for making some stuff. Um, yeah, I feel like not everything is in here, but that's okay. I think it'll still sell, even if only for the box itself. So uh, it was pretty cool. I don't know what, I, I mean, I may only be able to sell it for like 15 bucks, but it's still a really cool looking piece. So I think that that's exciting. All right, let's see, what do we have in here? This is super annoying already. I don't know what when I'm going to actually wear that if I end up needing it. My wrist is okay today, but let's see. I'm trying to figure out what I wanna show you guys. My nose is itchy. I don't know why that's happening. 
You know how like you want to say, okay, that's kind of cool stuff over there. So let's see. I mean, it's all cool. Um, this, you guys will, well, I don't know who watches this anymore, so I don't know who's going to be excited or not. Pyrex Friendship Pattern. And this is one of the Cinderella bowls. This is a size 443. And this is in really nice shape. The paint is shiny. Um, I don't see a lot of scratches on it at all. I'm holding it up to the light so that I can see it shows the scratches better. When the light shines through, I don't really see any. I was super excited when I saw this because my thrift store has been shitty about having Pyrex. So I snatched it right up and then immediately put it back on the shelf because what the fuck? $10 for this bullshit. But then I picked it back up again and I looked it up and it's selling, well, selling. It's on Etsy right now. There's multiples, like $30 is a pretty reasonable range for it. There's some that are higher than that. Um, I didn't get to see the eBay solds, but the Ebays that were currently available were like 20 and 25 bucks. So I felt like the $30 range on Etsy wasn't out of, you know, uh, unrealistic. So I picked it up. Um, again, it looks cool. People get excited about it, even though it's not a huge profit. And I'm going to have to, it, I bought it for 10. If I sell it for 30, 20 bucks is a nice profit. But I don't want to wrap this shit. Do you know how much bubble wrap I use for this? And I know that Allison Kapner, who's like a Pyrex packing goddess, because everything that she sells is like $700 Pyrex. She uses newspaper and paper and she's like the queen, but I cannot do it. I can't like I am never confident enough that it's going to be okay so I wrap this it's like three times its size by the time I'm done it gets there safely but I you know it's a process but anyway this will look cool on Etsy so I'm excited about that I got a couple of shirts so I remember I was talking about selling stuff that you don't like or don't care about so this is I mean whatever this is totally not my style um, but it's clothes which is totally my thing but this is Sundance, which is, you know, the Robert Red Robert Redford catalog? Sundance. Um, it's pretty. It's silk. I mean, it's fine. This is, again, nothing, whatever. It's I would never wear this. But it's a size large, which is helpful. Um, that's the label. As you can see, it cost me 7 bucks, And I think that I found an eBay sold for, I want to say around 40 bucks, And they were size medium. So this was a large. I think I was going to start it at 40 bucks or best offer. I can't remember if I went up a I went up a little bit, but I can't remember if I went higher than 40 because the other ones had sold less or if it was they had sold for 40 and I went higher than that, but whatever. It you know, um somewhere between I'll be able to get between 30 and 40 for this, I think. It's in really beautiful condition. It feels really nice. Um I think it's a pretty piece. It's just totally not my style. So um, the other thing that is, I want to say it's not my style, but I'm starting, it's growing on me a frightening amount since I've picked it up. Okay, I'm going to show you the back first. Look at this stupidness. This is, I don't know, this is very 90s to me. I don't know if I've got that right. You know, anything like, there's a definite period of the 80s where I know stuff was 80s. Once we get into the 90s, I don't remember the 90s having a style. Like, people define it in the 2000s and whatever. But to me, that's just normal stuff. That's not, I don't know. I don't know why. Like, I can't tell you what the 90s were. Although now it's getting to be like, I know the flair. I don't know. Whatever. So I'm terrible at it. Anything like 80s and earlier, I'm better with. But So this is the back of the shirt. It's ridiculous. And then the front. Um, it's got these gold snap buttons. This is silk, okay? Um, the cuffs are a little bit fancy. This is, maybe it's not 90s because I think the tag looks newer. Cache, 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 cache. And I paid $10 for this. But again, this is a size, I think it's a normal size. It's, it's large, actually. For some reason, I thought it was like a small or something. Um, I saw not this print. This print is amazing, I think. I think this is fantastic. I kind of want to try it on. But um, I saw other less exciting prints, in my opinion, with this same snap button style silk blouse thing. 
going for around 40 bucks on eBay, um, having sold for 40 bucks. So I might try it more around, I don't know. I'm going to look and see what some other stuff was. I want to say I would do it around 60 because I think, and, and I say 60 because I would put best offer on there. So I try to bump it up so that there's a decent amount to come down if somebody's making me an offer, right? Um, but I don't know, that might be high. I mean, I might stick around the $40 range and see what happens. I might stick it up for 60 for a month and then bring it down if nothing sells. So, but it's really cool. It's a nice shape. Again, it's silk. That's fantastic. And speaking of silk, I seem to be on the silk train today. This thing is so cool. I don't know why I think it's so cool. I just do. Um, I It is not a brand I've ever heard of before. I want to put it on, but I am pretty sure it's going to be ridiculously unflatteringly small on me but this oh you can't it's this is so like not even remotely looking the way that it looked to me like I don't even know if I put this on a hanger it's a really gorgeous like sage green kind of color silk I really like the silhouette of it um, I feel like this is not even remote. I don't know how I'm going to end up photographing this. I mean, my light right now is terrible because it's nighttime and I've just got the light bulb in the ceiling. This was $13, but it was really gorgeous. And it's an Italian brand. Um, Anna Rita, and I did not try to look this up at all. So I don't even know if this is a brand that's known, but it was one of those things that was just so pretty to me that I did not care what the brand was. Um, I didn't feel like it was important. I found this tag in here. The tag is totally written in Italian, so I don't really expect to find sold for it on eBay. Um, I've had that issue before with some other things, um, Italian things I've found, and some other things from other countries, I can't remember right now, French, I think, where I, I can't find them in solds on eBay, probably because it's just giving me mostly US stuff. So I don't have any idea what I'm gonna post this for. Um, it's really beautiful. It is like a classy bomber jacket style, in my opinion, it's very thin, but the dolman sleeves really, I don't know, do it for me. Um, so I don't know, we'll see. I don't know what I'm gonna sell it for yet. I'll figure it out though. I mean, it's gonna be, I'm gonna minimum put it starting around 40, so. Um, okay, this was really cool. And this is another thing I got because of the cool factor. This is George Briard enamel percolator. So if you are familiar with mid-century stuff, you know that he made a lot of enamelware things with this design, he had other designs as well, um, but this was a pretty popular one. This coffee pot, this particular percolator, first of all, it's missing its little perky guy, right? Which kind of sucks, um, but it's not, even if it had it, it wouldn't sell for enough. Like I, I could go and look for one online somewhere, but it's not gonna bump the price up enough to make it worthwhile for me, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, this is only selling on eBay, uh, eBay, on Etsy for like 25 bucks. Some of them are going for more. This is one of the less exciting ones. There are other ones that have metal handles that are attached fully and uh, a little bit more detailed. Um, so I'm not crazy about the handle on this one. And of course it's missing the hoozy guy. It does have the guts inside and I actually think that they're pretty cool. Sorry for the terrible night. I also think it's awesome that the top of this is decorated. Um, this is the innards, and it's all, um, this is all one piece, which I think is cool. And then there's this, which is a little bit different. And this is a little more substantial than a lot of what I see inside the pots. Usually this is a heavier enameled metal, so that's really nice. It's possible that I could break it up and maybe just sell this part separately because this would make a great stove top like um utensil holder or like a flower pot or something because the top is open whatever i just i picked it up because it was awesome and it'll look great in the shop and it's a cool piece that i i just enjoy them i've had a couple of george Briar pieces in the past that i really like 
So, all right, let's see. This I might keep for myself because it's pretty spectacular. Um, it's a purse, as you can tell. So you can see this is, it's not really a cord purse. If you guys are familiar, there was something um, in like the 30s and 40s, I think in the 30s, I'm pretty sure in the 40s, but I think it started in the 30s. There was what they call a cord purse. And it's like really thin, very tightly wound cord that was applied to a purse like in a design. So it's almost like you took a piece of wire and sort of like if you were making a spiral out of it and it was a solid flat circle that you had made out of this piece of wire that you curled around. It was sort of like that. Um, look it up if you are at all interested. They're really beautiful and they were, you know, and they're popular. They're nice pieces. This isn't that type of thing, but it is like um, a woven, it, it sort of reminds me of cord style purses, but not really. So, you know, you can see there's a little design on the front there. Um, what I like about this purse, first of all, these handles, I think the handles are leather, but they're in really nice shape. They're not, the. it's not coming apart here, which is nice. Usually like that can easily split and that hasn't happened. There's no cracking on the handles, which is nice. It's got a couple of compartments, so the two sides open up, and this is a separate centerpiece. You can actually sort of go like underneath it. It's not attached in the center, but that opens up. And it's nice and wide. A lot of vintage purses, because they're so small, they're sort of difficult to get into. So this is something that you could easily kind of carry around like the grandma that you are and stick your hand in to get your keys, and it's not that difficult to deal with. So I like it. This was $8, which if I'm going to keep it, no big deal at all. Um, and if I'm going to sell it, I could still make a decent profit. I would sell this for like 20 or 30 bucks. Again, not a huge amount of money, but I really like the piece. So um, I, it's weird how like there's times when it's like, I will buy an ugly ass St. John dress because it's a big profit and I will buy, I will spend too much money on a purse because I like it the way it goes. All right. Um, this was super exciting to me. I don't know why. So patches are one of the trends that are sort of in again right now. And I found these are called Royal Crest. And, um, you know, these are still in the package. So I'm going to take, I have, it came with these also. Now, first of all, what I think is funny is it's Royal Crest. And hmm, who do those look like? At least she, she looks like Princess Di, I think. He does not even remotely look like Prince Charles, but that's not, they wanted to be sure that they could sell this, right? So, sorry for all you people who are all Prince Charles crazy, if there are any of you out there. But this was also with it. So this is what, these are the patches that are in the Princess Di advertising thing. So see, they're really cool. Is it going to focus on this instead of other stuff? Um, the gold is like a metallic, um, like a wiry sort of thread. It's really pretty. I don't think it's actual beading. There's like a gold and then like a bronze. So the thicker areas are sort of the bronzier color. Anyway, I wish it would focus better, but it's really cool. And then I have one that's larger. This package has two smaller ones. And then as a little bonus, totally unrelated item, this was in there. And that's really cool. It's all beaded. And I can't tell, um, I may post it, I mean, it doesn't really matter, I don't think. The back of it, it's hard to tell if this is an older piece or not. Normally I would try to tell by the construction, but I can't. Um, I don't think I'm going to sell this along with these, because these are obviously all look very similar. I don't even know if I should sell them individually or not. Um, there's part of me that wants to start keeping some of them and get a cool denim jacket and sew them on there, but I, <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's a nice little dream, but that's never happening. So I did think about sending them off to Amanda Hale at Sweet Dahlia Vintage because she's been doing some fantastic denim jackets and hand sewing. I don't know if she's hand sewing them, but she herself is sewing the patches on. I don't know if she's using a machine or not. Um, and, and they're really awesome looking 
but you know, she's selling them for a decent amount of money. So I couldn't afford to pay her what she's selling them for. And I wouldn't ask her to do it for less because it's a shitload of time to do that. Um, but they're really cool. Okay. So next, um, I also do not do music stuff really. Um, CDs, vinyl, whatever, because I don't, I don't know what the fuck. It's too much to look through. I'm not interested enough. Um, I don't feel like, uh, like maybe if I found some record that was worth 500 bucks, yes, it'd be worth it. But normally you're going to find something that you're going to pay 25 cents or a dollar for and sell it for $9 shipped. So I don't fucking care. Um, but we had to find for our thrift scavenger hunt, we had to find a, an eighties hairband cassette tape, which I have to admit, I don't know that I would consider myself as having been successful in that venture. What I did find, they were selling the cassettes in fours for 99 cents each. 99, which I feel like went down. I think they used to be like 250 each, which was stupid. So I bought two of them um, because they were 99 cents each and I'm an impulse shopper. This one has new kids on the block hanging tough. And I'm gonna admit that the only reason that I was tempted to buy this is because one of our Instagram people one of our Instagram customers is like a new kids on the block freak. She loves everything new kids on the block. And it's gotten to a point where among the sellers, like when we see something new kids in someone else's shop, we tag her and it. We're like, Hey Lisa, look, and she loves it. You know, it's great. So I am, I'm sure she has this five times over by now, but it made me pick it up because I know through her, I know that they are sort of in vogue again. They have a cruise. She went on a new kids on the block cruise so anyway well but this is one of those things that's selling for like 10 bucks shipped so you know i don't know if it's in good shape or not but it's hysterical in addition to new kids on the block in here i've got the sinatra christmas album madonna like a virgin and little richard shake it all about i don't know who puts these things together do they randomly like close their eyes dig it a bit and grab four i don't know that's what it seems like a little bit but the second one that I got, this was my hair band. I know it's not really a hair band, but they have really awesome hair and they're a band. Um, but this is a terrible cassette cover. This is depressing looking, but Stray Cats. I happen to really like the Stray Cats. I like the Stray Cats song, shockingly. Uh, I like a lot of their other stuff. I like Brian Setzer's later stuff. This is a hideous looking cassette. I don't know that why they couldn't do better than that. And then when you open it up too, it's like, okay, are you ready for this? It's What the fuck is that? Like there's nothing happening in here. It's awful. EMI America, like where they, I thought they were just cool enough to have something inside their cassette at least for crying out loud. Anyway, so I got it for that just because I like them. But then also in there, we've got another Frank Sinatra, Greatest Hits Volume 2. I can put that with the Frank Sinatra Christmas album. It's super exciting. Uh, Vic Damone. I mean, I've heard of him. I don't know if anybody cares. I don't mean to. Feelings, Lazy Afternoon. There's a song called If. Ghost Riders at Windmills of Your Mind. Over the Rainbow is on there. Okay. I know where I'm sending this now. I'm going to send that to Lord's sister. Um, and then, okay, Chris Rogers, if you were watching this, I don't know if you're going to remember this. I thought it was funny. Um, this is Dionne Warwick. It's got That's What Friends Are For. And I'm pretty sure that we all went into a center stage booth in the Rockaway Mall and sang this. I don't remember who all was in there. I feel like in my brain, there's like 14 people that were there and I don't know if that's realistic, but um, I know that we sang that's what friends are for. So, oh my God, that's crazy. This is sealed. Uh, it is not a sealed hairband as per Kayla's request, but it's sealed. So the Stray Cats was kind of my hairband. Um, although I also sent Barbara Mandrell picture for the scavenger hunt because I kind of feel like when you look at Barbara Mandrell's hair from that time period she could probably qualify as a hairband so there's that then I think this is my last item is it hmm. 
but it's um, pretty awesome. And it's a pretty awesome item, and it's a pretty decent profit. What is this? Oh, that's my phone case. I would be tempted to keep it because it matches my hair. I do like the color. But the only cassette that I have currently that I would actually play on it is the Stray Cats. And while I do enjoy listening to the same songs over and over and over again, I might need more than just one cassette. I don't know. But this is so awesome. I did test it in the store. It does power on. And the little tapey things, like it moved and stuff. There was no tape to play and there was no signal to really get anything, but it's got this strappy guy. I do need to clean it up because it's grody. Um, it's got this. Remember that? Some of you do. Some of you probably don't. It's got, oh, it's so cool. I did not own anything this cool when I was in high school or college or like before that. Probably not until I was about 37. I did not own cool things. Um, but this was very exciting. I do it, I have to clean it up, and there are batteries currently in it that need to not be in it because they have had some corrosion, and I need to clean that up too. But I am going to play a cassette on it before I sell it. But these were selling. I did not see lavender on eBay, but I did see pink and a lime green and I think yellow. And they were going for at least 60 bucks. They had a couple of pinks that went for like 120. So I will probably try to start this high um, in that $120 range and see if it goes. Well, I paid 10 bucks for it. So, um, but I was super excited about that. So I thought that was way cool. And that's pretty much my thrift haul. Um, I was very excited about it. I did want to show you guys one. Hi, Bubba. Oh, this is back, but he can't get in my lap because I have crap in it. I wanted to show you guys one other thing that was like a personal purchase of mine. Um, in our vintage group on Facebook, we have a couple of threads that we run where we try to help each other promote items. So like I'll put links to my listings and other people will go in and help to try and like pin them on Pinterest or tweet them out or whatever. Um, and this is the second time I've done this where somebody put something in one of those threads and I just bought it because it was awesome. And that happens to us once in a while, so it's pretty cool. Um, and this is also filthy. I brought it in here because I need to wash it. And so as I was taking it out of the kitchen, I'm like, I should show them in my video. But look at this towel. I obviously am in love with this towel. Um, it's amazing. So I think that Lord is less impressed with it. <laughs> he tends to not like this kind of stuff, but he's very patient with me. I bought that. I'm going to have to look her up. Um, the shop that I got it from, her name her name is Lucy. I'm sure you can find her right away, right now. Um, but let me see if I can find her shop and just give her a little shout out because um, there it is. Let's see. Her shop is I think I have to click like 14 more things to figure it out. I hate when I do this kind of stuff. Um, Sella, Sella, Sella. Oh my God. Akalulu 747. I don't know if she has a store store. Let's see. I don't think that she actually has an eBay store. A-K-A-L-U-L-U -L -L -U 747. And she's got some awesome stuff. Oh, she's got a cool circus tumbler. Right, because I figured you guys want to, oh, that's not going to work out, is it? Can you see that? Look at, you can't. You can't see it, but I'm showing it to you anyway. Too bad for you. It's a camel on there. It's awesome. <sighs> Looney Tunes, Porky Pig, whatever. You guys should go check her out. She's, oh, she's got a caboodle. Caboodles are a big thing too, by the way. Um, she's got hers listed for 18 or best offer plus shipping. I feel like that's pretty um, normal range. I've only sold one caboodle, but mine was like 2003. And I think I was only able to sell it because it still had the tag on it. Caboodles from like, what are they, 80s, 90s also are popular. They have made them later, but the earlier ones are the better ones. Um, let's see. And then she's got some Disney stuff. So it's cool. You should go check her out. 
Um, if I'm coordinated, I'll put a link to her shop in my profile, but I probably am not. Sorry, Lucy. I love your towel, though, for serious. Um, anyway, but that's it. I spent most of today watching Girl Boss on Netflix, and I really have a love-hate relationship with the show. I totally binge-watched it. I watched the whole thing. I'll say that I hate the title. I despise the term girl boss. I know it's supposed to be all empowering and whatnot. I think it's bullshit. I am a fucking woman. Um, a girl is like eight years old or 12 years old. And when people use the term girl boss, I'm like, what I picture is like, oh, hi. Oh, my God. I'm like, totally. I have my own store. And I'm like, so cool. And whatever. Like, that's I, no. Like, Oprah is not a girl boss. Uh, Anna Wintour, Vogue magazine, not a girl boss. You would not call them girl boss, okay? You, they are women. And I hate using the word girl to talk about adult women because this is us and it's stupid. And I know that I'm on my high horse, but too bad. Um, it makes me crazy. Um, and I don't think it's cute at all. And I am also very much over this, like, character that they seem to put out there of this younger woman who's rude and nasty and somehow that's endearing like the character and girl boss is an atrocious human being especially early on like it gets a little bit better later but she is so selfish and i don't know if that's what the real person is like um but it was it was difficult to bear <laughs> in the beginning of the the series i watched because of course the clothing was incredible um but you know, whatever. So um, ultimately, I do think it ended up being a good show. I did find it motivating because, you know, she's working out of her, just seeing the energy that she works with was really cool. Um, even if it was very selfish and very like, fuck everybody kind of a, an energy, but she was very motivated. Um, she ends up in a warehouse space and you just look at this space and she's got these clothes everywhere. And, and you know, and that's motivating because you want to be like that, you know? Um, so that part was cool. So I would recommend it if you are into vintage clothing. Um, maybe if you're into just online, recently like thrift online selling. So, um, but if you're like, like wholesaling, you're not going to, I don't, I don't know, whatever. I thought it was interesting from that perspective. So uh, I watched that all day and did zero actual work. Um, my car had to be taken into the shop again. We had to take the car into the shop two weeks ago because what happened to it? It just stopped working. We went into the city and it just died in the parking spot, thankfully, but it just died. And it was something with the clutch or the transmission or whatever. So then like two days ago, the check engine light came on and the check engine light apparently means everything from like there's dust on your engine to you're about to die any minute. Like it can mean anything in there. Right. So Lauren had gone and looked up all sorts of stuff. He goes onto these Fiat forums all the time to look things up because Fiat is a disaster. Um, and he saw something like it might be the gas cap or whatever. So it was not the gas cap, but we got somebody to, I don't know, it's something called a brake pedal switch. I don't know. Apparently we just have to order the part. He can't order it or we have to go to the dealer, which we're not going to do. So we have to order the part, which isn't very expensive, but whatever. So I spent part of the day going there and then I went to the post office. And of course I went to the thrift store and bought all this awesome stuff. So tomorrow I have to try and get some of it posted. Um, Lord is away on a job currently. So um, I kind of have a little bit, he doesn't ever bother me with time. It's not like I don't have time to myself when he's here, but I feel more like I have time to myself because I don't feel guilty not spending time with him. <laughs> so uh, I have some work to do tomorrow. It's raining like every day for decades over here. So that sucks. I don't know when I'll be able to photograph anything. The next day that it is supposed to be sunny, mother of pearl. It is not supposed to be sunny like Friday. Well, tomorrow might be partly sunny. And then raining monday tuesday wednesday and then not partly sunny until friday again it fucking blows taking pictures and that is awful so i've been doing more like organization and cleaning but i still really need to get some stuff listed i had some good sales i had the individual item sales were decent i sold that levi's t-shirt that went for 87 dollars, i think um that was pretty cool 
and then I sold one of the John Purse, uh, James Purse shirts, which I sold for 20. Um, oh, and I sold a, like a wedding album thing um, for like 15 bucks that I had gotten for free. And like one or two things on Etsy that were pretty low. So the individual sales, like the, the Levi's shirt helped me. I sold an expensive pair of sneakers a couple days ago. That helped me. Um, I have to get some more expensive items sold or a fuck ton more of not expensive items sold. So we'll see. But I have to get them listed. So after this, I only drank like this much of the coffee. I'm still probably not going to be able to sleep though. So I'll get some things done. Um, put some stuff away and whatnot and hopefully be able to be productive tomorrow. I hope you guys all go and um, if you're on Instagram, I am on there at Cats and Tads Vintage. So please um, follow me or say hi or whatever. Um, I'm trying to get more involved in the reseller community over there. Um, on, on, I don't go on, I mean, I'm on Facebook all the time, but usually I'm in my small vintage group and we're a, we're a closed group. Um, I have a Facebook page that I pay zero attention to. It's terrible. I have a Twitter that I don't do anything with because I don't, know well, whatever, I don't like Twitter. Um, I'm, I'm trying to be a good social media maven and I am not good at it at all. I'm very neglectful. Um, but yeah, so, you know, and then feel free to leave me comments and stuff if you like things. Um, if you don't like things, you can leave comments, but it would be nice though because I, you know, my feelings will get hurt. I'm not going to lie, but whatever. <laughs> so uh, I hope you guys are having a productive weekend. Um, if you're on Instagram, go play Hazel Hearts Vintage for scavenger hunt. It's fun. So, all right. Have a good evening. Um, I closed the chat, so I don't know if anybody's saying anything. I'm sorry about that. But um, thank you guys for watching. <laughs>